Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to create a deck of cards for the card game Uno. So first off, my typing might be a little bad because I slammed my finger in my garage door yesterday. So bear with me please. Other than that, the first thing we're going to do is since he, Uno first off has 108 cards in the deck and they have three different kinds of cards. They got the numbered cards, the action cards, and your wild cards. So I kind of want to do it in the most professional way possible so you don't have to write so much code because obviously that's the goal. So starting first off, I want to create my cards. So that's going to be the deck of cards. All right. Next, I'm going to create another array to represent the colors that we have. Inside of Uno, there's red, green, blue, the face of it, yellow. Then we got our action cards. So we got. I think there's only three of them. Yes, uh, we got three of them. So we got reverse, skip, and draw two. And here, oh, what about draw four? That's a wild card. Wild card, draw four. So that we don't even need an array for because it's just two of them. So now I'm going to create a function that's going to create the deck. Every time I run the program, it'll be like, boom, created the deck. So, um,. Call it whatever you want. Oops, see, that's what I'm talking about. Create deck. And when we want to create the deck, you don't have to put anything in the parentheses because this is a global uh, list here. So we can go right in. So I'm just going to start off by creating the numbered cards first. So we'll do the numbered cards. Then after that, we will do the action card. Oh, my goodness. Action cards, and then last but not least, we will have our wild cards. So, right here, I don't know why there's a red line or anything that makes no sense. Indent expected, you have an indent, whatever. So, we're gonna do 4i in range. Yeah, see, it went away. <laughs> Python's dumb. So, 4i in range of four and the reason why is because when you have your numbered cards inside of uno if you look it up every color has a, uh like four versions of each card so like if you just go on google and you look it up you'll, you'll see how many action cards how many numbered cards for every color inside the deck so what not like that so like I said, there's 108 colors, eh, there's 108 cards, 4 colors, and so there's like 8 wild cards, 24 action, and 76 numbers, you add it all together, you get 108. So, to make sure that you get 1, 0, and 2 of every number from 1 through 9 for each color, we do 4, because there's 4 colors. Obviously, you could do the length of color list, whatever, same thing. So I'm going to create a variable that's going to represent the number that we have, starting at 0, because you get 1, 0 for every color, and then from numbers 1 through 9, you get 2 of each for every color, by the way. you, you got to rewind the video for me to explain it, or you can just go on Google, and then you'll be like, ah, oh, yes. So I'm just going to move on. Now, because I have a nested loop here, I can't use I again. You know, you can always write whatever you want, obviously. Oops, right in. So, we have four to represent the four colors, and then for the range, we actually need to have a different number, which is going to be ten. And why ten? Well, if you have numbers one through nine and zero, that's ten numbers. Simple math. So, moving on, we are going to create a... Um, variable card to represent the current card that we are going to want added to cards. I mean, you could name this deck if that's too close 
for you if you're a beginner programmer, but I'm just going to keep it the way I like it. So we're going to use our colors. So we're going to use colors at index I because as it's looping through, we got red, green, then blue, then yellow. So then I want to add like an underscore so later I can differentiate like the colors and the numbers based on who's playing cards and etc like that. So then we have that number variable to represent who we got. So we need to convert it to a string obviously because right now we've got strings going on. And you just type in the variable. Very easy. So now we have to make sure that we only get one zero added, but then we get two of all the other numbers added, and obviously it's just going to stop after nine and go back up and reset the zero for the next color. So that's all good. So I'm just going to do a simple if statement that checks if the number is equal to zero, then I just want you to add it once, which append is add, add the card that we have here, and otherwise we want to do an else statement where you're going to add it twice because if it's not equal to zero we want two of them so you just write twice ah. dot append card excellent so that would be done but it doesn't actually add to the number variable so it would be stuck at zero the entire time so you just want to backspace, backspace and then you do number plus equal one. So now every time it will either add one zero or add two of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then it will stop and it'll go to the next loop, which gets the index at i because it's going one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, and so four, four times. You got four. You could literally do the length of colors here instead of four because it's the same thing. Um, I mean, these are the only colors in Uno, so there's no need to add any more. Unless you're trying to make your own version of Uno. Oh, there we go. So now we're going to do our action cards, which is kind of the same thing, just with the action list. So we're going to do 4i in range, which I can do i because I'm no longer inside of that one. So this is now a different loop, not inside that loop, so we'll have no issues. So I can use 4i. Now we're also going to do four because again there's four colors then um, I just changed it to the index and then like we did before just use a different one because we already use I so you can't use I twice so 4j in range of three and why three again you could do length of action because there's three here there's ten cards there it doesn't matter so the three different kinds of action, reverse, skip, draw two. Don't need a list for wild because it's going to just be two of them. The wild card is going to be the easiest, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. So for J in range of three, we are now going to do the same thing we did before. We create a new variable. This has no representation of this one since that was in a nested loop, and this one's in a different nested loop. So this one will not contradict that variable on line 10. You don't have to worry about that. So card equals colors at index i. You gotta make sure you do this. This is the loop for the colors, that first one. That's why we use i, not j. j is for the individual ones we're adding. And like I did before, I'm just gonna do that underscore. So later on in the code, I will be able to differentiate the color and the number separately by stopping or starting after that underscore. So then I'm just going to, instead of you know, index, because that's that's going to be used in a moment. We're actually just going to grab action at index. Index. So action is my list that I created on line three. Just in case. So moving on. Now we want to add it twice. There's two. Ah. My finger really hurts. So card cards dot append card so now we have it in two times so we can get two of each for each color 
kind of like suits, like spades and whatnot like that. So now we're going to go and just add to the index variable. Yeah, there we go. So every time it finishes adding two cards for, uh, well, three different cards of two of each for each color, you will then add one to the index, so then when it goes back through the loop, it can move on to the next color for the next three of two of each. If that doesn't make sense, I'm going to go through it one more time. So you have four colors. You have three different types of action cards, but you want two of each type of action card for every color. There you go. And that's pretty much it. We're just going to do our wild cards, which is literally like real quick. So, there's actually four regular wild cards and four wild draw four cards. So, we just do one for loop. Don't need to do a nested loop. And then we can just tell our cards to append a wild and then whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it wild draw four. I don't need any underscores because this is just a wild and it's pretty easy. I can detect whether it has a four in it or not later on. So pretty simple. Now I'm going to show you guys that it worked by printing out the entire deck. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I didn't call the function. <laughs> That's awkward. Okay, so now we're good. There we go. So, <laughs> still laughing at myself. Ow, 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 my finger. So we got red all the way, and it stops at 9, starts at 0. We only have one zero. We got two of the other numbers. You can see here that it is beautifully perfect. If we go all the way through, even though it's going to be the same thing because it's just looping over and over again, and we never go outside of the index with no errors we have everything is perfect we got our skips we got our like obviously this is not shuffled you just import random and then shuffle your deck not complicated but this is the deck creation if you wanted to shuffle it and you really don't know how i guess i'll show you right now but it's really easy you just import random And then before you print the deck, obviously, but after you've created it, you can do random dot shuffle cards. And then when I print it, it's in a completely randomized thing. If you want to call it twice so you can get a really good shuffle, you can do that too, or whatever you want. But obviously, it's got 108 cards, so shuffling it might take... You know, maybe you could do it twice or something like that. You know, that'd be cool. Let's see what that looks like, actually. Oh, my finger. My finger. So, did I do that right? I think I missed a character. So, and that is actually a better shuffle. Now you got it twice. You shuffled the shuffle. Any questions, comments, concerns? That's what the comment section is for. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, I take video recommendations. So, if you leave a video recommendation for any language in the comment section below, I will definitely make that video for you. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have fun coding.